So let's have a look at the following problem. We have a sequence, n factorial over n to the n, and we want to determine or evaluate the limit as n approaches infinity. So this is a difficult problem. If we look at the sequence, it's written in a, in a very compact form. My approach here is to actually expand uh, parts of the sequence to see if we can simplify or um, put it in a more usable format here. So let's try that. So the first thing I'm going to do is to expand the n factorial. Okay, so n factorial is just n times n minus 1, n minus 2, down to 1. And n to the power n, I'm just going to leave that as it is. Now, if we look carefully, can we relate the top part with the bottom part in some, in some way? Well, n minus 1 is always less than or equal to n. n minus 2 is always less than or equal to n. So if we just concentrate on these factors here, n minus 1 factors, each of those factors is less than or equal to n for every n. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace each of these factors with n and have a less than or equals to sign joining them. Okay, and I'm going to keep my n to the n down the bottom. So in this big bracket, I've got n minus 1 factors of n. So I can rewrite this bracket now as n to the n minus 1 and I'm still dividing by that n to the n. Now can you see the simplification that can occur now? This is just 1 on n. Okay, so how does that help us? Well we know that n factorial on n to the n is less than or equal to 1 on n for every uh, natural number n. Well, how does that help us? Well, we've got an inequality, and we know that our sequence, each term in our sequence, is greater than or equal to 0. So for each n, this is true. Now the pinching theorem says we can take limits everywhere and keep the same inequalities. Well, how does that help us? Well, if we look at the limit on the left-hand side, it's zero. If we look at the limit on the right-hand side, that's also zero. So this is where we want to be. We can then determine the limit of our sequence, the thing in the middle, it must be zero. Okay. So the limit of the left-hand side is less than or equal to the limit of the middle, which is the thing we want. Okay, so the limit over here is zero. The limit in the middle, well, that's what we want. And the limit of the right-hand side is also zero. So we get... So now, we have a situation where our limit is greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to zero. So the only explanation for this, the limit must be zero. The thing in the middle must be equal to zero.
Okay, so let's review what we did there. We essentially expanded this factorial, used an inequality to simplify, and then applied the pinching theorem. 